Today's video is being brought to you by NeverDenyMe.com. Make sure you take a look at the website for all your graphic needs, anything from digital to physical. What's going on everybody? It's your boy Nate Matthews back again with another video. I know y'all been showing a whole bunch of love to all these type of videos, so guess what? I'm going to keep them coming for y'all. Now keep this in mind though. You guys are probably looking out for these videos, but I have a lot more uh, digitizing and artwork that I have done on my website, which is NeverDenyMe.com. For all the ones that I don't have really enough time to make a video for, go to the website and also contact me if you want me to turn your logo into an embroidered patch or whatever it may be. If you got your own machine and just need me to, you know, make the design for your machine, I got you. Contact me. Now, today we got the Brother PE770 right here, as you guys can see right in front of the camera. Now, what I'm going to be doing is stitching up another one of these. Y'all see it. Y'all see it. This is the proof render right here, what I showed the client of how his design is going to look. And I actually made one and it looks exactly like I thought it was going to look. So, with that being said, I'm going to show you guys how this thing stitches out. So, yeah, man, if again, if you guys want some of your designs digitized, contact me, neverdenyme.com. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram as well because I post a lot of stuff over there that I don't post on YouTube. So, with no further ado, let's go. As you guys can see, we got the black thread already into the machine. I already hooped it. I have my four inch hoop right there. It's already got the stabilizer, the cutaway stabilizer. And right now, we're going to do the uh, placement stitch. And then we're going to put the fabric there. You know, the whole gizmo. So check it out. It goes really quick, too, for this first part. As you guys know, the placement stitch just means hey, this is where you need to put your piece of fabric at. And, you know, so you don't waste too much of it. So just like that, two seconds later, we have a circle right there, as you guys can see. Now what I'm going to be using is some of that same fabric that I told you guys was in the last video that, uh, you know, it still allows my designs to be good. So it's just all about the design and how it is digitized as to how it will, uh, you know, stitch out. So same exact piece of fabric that I used in the last video. I'm going to be using it on this project. Now, what I do after that circle is already in there. I'm just placing this into the machine because this is going to be my backer. Now that I have that there, let's go ahead and tack this bad boy down. I like to hold it too in the beginning just to make sure it don't slip, you feel me? It's going to be all good. There we go. Now this next part is going to be where it's going to be using up a lot of thread, but it's okay because when you're using a backer like that, um, you want the design to be kind of thick. You know, sometimes I use a backer as a negative space if I want black and don't want to use too much thread. With this one, however, with the size of this design, it's not going to take too much of my thread. But as you guys can see right here, I have a, a whole entire circle that needs to be filled in with black. So. I'm going to keep that in there right now. I'm going to press the button. And this is going to start stitching black all inside of that circle right there. And this is what I ended up cutting out from this right here. As you guys can see, went ahead and cut out the circle. Yeah, I used my applique scissors right here. Link in the description for everything that I use. Cut this out. Perfect circle. It's black in the back as well because I have black bobbin thread. Normally I have white, but yeah, this one is black. So frame back, there it is. Now we're going to go ahead and throw this back into the machine. All right, now what we're doing right here is throwing a little white border on. It's going to take probably two to five seconds, you know, once it gets going. This is going to be a nice little border. Y'all see it coming around, ring around the rows, you feel me? Something as small as this, uh, a small little straight stitch. It'll add a little extra pop to the design. Now, we're gonna go ahead and take the uh, white out and we're gonna go ahead and load up the red. Before you just take it out, you cut it right there. You release the presser foot. You take the thread out right here. You're gonna have to toss that. Take this out, it's very simple. I'm setting it down on the table because I know I'm gonna be using it again. Um, yeah, I am actually for this eye part to do the eye. So I'll just leave it on the table, throw that in there. Is one hook, two, around, three, four, five, six, seven, and cut it on number eight. And there you have it. 
throw that presser foot down. So now it tells me to do the red. It's getting ready to stitch the words in there with the red. You guys may be able to see it right here where it shows the, the writing at the top and the bottom. So let's go ahead and press go. And it's going to do the nice spelling on there and everything like that. And it's going to come out looking real nice. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is take this out the hoop, goals and success. So now this is the reason why you need the Maffle K scissors. Um, go ahead and cut these strings right there so there that way there's no red string sticking out in the back behind the next thing that we're going to lay down. So I'll show you guys how easy this is. I mean, of course, you guys could guess, right? Simply just put the scissors right up under here. Don't clip until you lift it. Boom. It's loose now. Now you can go ahead and boop and cut it. Then we're going to go ahead and load up the next color. See what it's looking like in here. Same thing, next design, get the scissors, cut it here, lift it, take this That's out. That's what we got so far, goals and success. We got a hand, some lips, and a face. Check this out, let me zoom in just a tiny bit. Y'all see that hat getting put on there? And I love doing satin stitches, man. When you do a satin stitch, the stitch is just so much better. It looks look like so clean. But you gotta keep in mind though, it depends on the shape and like the type of design you're doing. Everything can't be a satin stitch, but satin stitch pretty much means that your the thread is literally laying on top of the fabric. It's not being you know tugged underneath, and it, it doesn't have to go under the bobbin too much. So therefore, it makes the color pop a lot more. Y'all y'all can't really see it right now, but that blue on them pants. Is pop. It's one thing for me to design these things on a computer or to convert them. If you guys are sending me your designs, I do have to convert them um, to make them uh, readable for the machine. And after I convert them, I have a little thing on my computer where I can actually watch it sew on my computer exactly what it's going to do, exactly how it'll look. And then, you know, throw some stuff on my phone and, you know, graphic design type stuff, man. I'll be editing things and then watch it come out. In person, you know, that's why my tag is everything from digital to physical. You feel me? Because you know, the graphics start, of course, on the computer, a digital design formatted correctly. Man, this thing can be a shirt, a beanie, a hat, whatever you want it to be. I'll turn it into that for you if y'all work with me. Never deny me.com. Don't forget, let's go ahead and throw in this white. Now, this is the part that I was, uh, I mean, when I tell you guys that certain designs or certain features in a design you, you might not want to. To do them so with this client right here i suggested hey we can do this design but let's maybe not do a face meaning no uh you know no white eyeballs no black pupils or whatever and he decided he wanted that to be done anyway which it doesn't mess up the design at all but you just really can't see the features too well it doesn't mess it up i mean i guess it's cool to have it but you know when i send a preview i try to send a realistic preview as to what you're going to get and you know, you can kind of see the eyeballs and stuff like that on the preview, but with it being so, so, so small of a feature on a very small patch, this is a three inch patch. You can't really see it. Um, and I'll, I'll show you guys that after the fact. So let me actually take this out. Matter of fact, I'll show you guys right now. Show you guys what I did. It, again, if my camera wants to cooperate and let y'all zoom in. So what we got right here, the last thing I just did right now was I put the white into the eyeballs. Let's see if it'll focus. Y'all see that? You can't see that hardly at all. Now it's gonna look better because again, there is a little white piece of string in the center going across from eyeball to eyeball. So that can be cut out and there's gonna be a black people on top. But realistically, can you guys see the white on there? Not at all, really, right? Exactly, so that's what I'm saying. So again, you know, I'm gonna work with you guys and do exactly what you guys ask, but from my experience, I'm always gonna suggest what I think may be best for your design. Yes, it may be your design, 
But, you know, I want you to be satisfied with the things that I'm doing for you, especially with this coming from, you know, out of my name, NeverDenyMe.com, you know, well, my, the name of the business, you know, not my name. Um, but, yeah, I just want you guys to really be satisfied with the stuff that I'm doing for you, so that's why I try to give my suggestions. We are almost done. So I got a full thing of black, man. I just popped a little tag off of this one right before I started this project. Matter of fact, in the middle of the project, because my other little spool right here of black ran out. So that's why you got to always make sure you have these things on deck, y'all. Your prime colors, man, you need them. Make sure you get as big of a spool as you can because, trust me, they're going to go. So I, I need a lot of black and a lot of white, uh, blues, reds, yellows, greens, and anything after that, man, it don't really matter because it's like special order. Not too many people are going to be ordering designs with, you know, purple and, and pink and all that type of stuff. So, of course, I got those colors, but you don't really need to stay stocked up on stuff like that. Y'all can kind of see that beard. It's kind of hard to see though because again, it's on black fabric with the same exact thread. But to make it kind of noticeable, I did stitch it in a completely different direction. So it does pop off a tad, tad bit. I'm going to keep it going. Drop a comment. Let me know what you guys want to see next. Again, I have a contact form on my website. If you guys want to send me your designs, I can definitely do the same type of stuff for you. Now I want to show you guys something about uh, the, the back of this. As a matter of fact, we'll start with this. So when I told you guys... If your design is way too dense, if it's not digitized correctly for the appropriate size, it's going to start looking funky. Now, this is one that I made in a previous video. If you didn't see this one or if you want to see this one, hit the card that pops up. By the way, this is the back of the design. So if you guys are wondering what the heck is that, go watch the video. Um, but yeah, when you look from the side, it's pretty clumpy. It's very, it's very hard and knotted up. Now, the reason that happens is because... This design has so many details that are very, very close together because it's all squeezed down into a, like, look at that, y'all. It's one inch. It's a one inch design. Small as the tip of my finger there. And it's just, it doesn't look good. It's hard. It's clumped up. Now, when I digitize these, and this is why I tell you guys I need to know the size ahead of time um, so I can, uh, you know, tell the machine, hey, it only needs a certain amount of stitches in this area. That way it doesn't get clumped up. So as you guys seen again with the clumpiness of this design, I'm going to show you guys the back of this one. Now if you look at the back of this one, look, it's flush. Now you guys see some tie-offs and stuff like that, but I mean that's going to be on any design. So look at the back of this design. Yo, it's flush with the paper, with the stabilizer. Flush. It's very smooth. It's not clumpy at all. It's very smooth. This is how you want your designs to be. That way when you put them onto a t-shirt or whatever, you know, you're not feeling it through the other side. Look at that. Clean, y'all. That's what I'm talking about. Clean. This, not clean. I don't even know if you want to focus. It don't even want to focus. Just trust me. It's not clean. Another thing I want to show you guys. I use black bobbin thread on the back of this, right? But I started with white. Now, as you guys can see, I started with white and then I ran out and switched to the black. Now, even though there's white at the bottom, with the tension and all that type of stuff, if your machine is set up properly, that white is going to stay behind the design, which is where it's supposed to be at. So, as you guys can see, you don't see no white at all showing through the top. Let me zoom in real quick. There is no white showing through the top of the design at all. This is 100% stitch, guys. I had the black piece of fabric right there, but I actually did black stitches across the entire thing, and then I did a black border across there as well. So the white is not showing along the front, even though it's on the back. So with the black one, of course, it doesn't really matter because it's black on the front and the back, but yeah, smooth. Same thing with this one, guys. Smooth. So yeah, if you guys think this is cool, if you guys like the way it came out, do be sure to hit the thumbs up button before you guys head out of, out of here. And I'm going to ready to, you know, finish this up, throw the iron on on the back of it, Put it in my little bags and stuff like that, man. The business is picking up, you feel me? So if you guys do want to work with me, I do appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to doing the next design. All right, y'all. So here's the final result. This is what the customer is going to see when he takes it out the pack. Two of them up in there. Nice, clear bags. Upgraded my bags and stuff, man. Small things like that definitely do matter. Hopefully, you guys notice it for the people that have worked with me before. Business card on the back there. Got to get some updated ones. But, you know, for the most part, you can still contact me the same exact way. These patches are three inches. Um, customer, again, sent me this picture. I had to do some edits to it because the picture was kind of blurry and uh, not a very good quality photo. Had to put some edits to it. 
changed the uh, the font to make it uh, stitchable. Made two of them, three inches. Um, again, on the back, I did add the iron-on adhesive, which again, I don't know if I'm going to be offering that service in the future. Yeah, if you guys want me to work on your design next, holla at me, man. The website is neverdenyme.com. Let's work.